taking a moment to be here to draw myself into presence as we begin together, begin again, perhaps. Um, I will start by sharing the name of today's class because it's very grounding for me. Um, the name of today, <laughs> of today's class is Love is a Place. Love is a Place, and you'll hear more about why, um, why that is our theme today. I also want to name with, uh, with kind of tenderness in my, my own being that today's class is a donation-based class for the, um, those impacted by the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. I have put in the chat, and if you're catching this later, I'll put in the comments ways to donate to uh, either Medicine Without Borders or um, a UNICEF-based group or your own choice of any group if you, if you choose um, for, um, uh, for those impacted. And uh, looking this morning at the news, it was over 24,000 people that have been identified as killed in that earthquake. It's more than my mind can contemplate. Um, so we are going to practice with love. We are going to practice love today. Um, the, um, the focus that I'll name here is that when tragedies arise, whether it's in our own personal lives or collectively, um, we can sometimes question how to stay open to life or whether we can ever love again. And this class, um, is for all of us knowing that we have all arrived here with our own life experiences that have left us quaking. And tonight I explore, or today I explore the idea of opening ourselves to love, even in the midst of despair, even in the midst of those kinds of really painful edges of life that we are facing, all of us collectively, each of us in our own individual ways. And I believe that to continue to open ourselves to love is a true act of courage. Physically, this class is going to offer some loving challenge. Um, we're gonna focus on the side bodies, lots of really beautiful side body opening. And um, I often think of the side bodies as the side gates of the heart. So we'll have some really joyous opening of the side bodies. We'll do some joint rotations and twists and turns and some balance challenges and um, closing with some opportunities to really open across the heart space. As always, listen to yourself, be gentle, I'll show modifications for some of the challenges and you do you, please. <laughs> Intention today, I am love. I am waking up to the love that lives in me and all around me. I open myself to the yes in myself and in this world that we share. It is my, our birthright to love and be loved. So sometimes in a class, I'll tie in what we call a sankalpa, a sacred vow. And the sacred vow for, for this class, which we think of as a commitment to ourselves, to this life, to the world, sacred vow, and I'll share these again later. I'll read them throughout as we go. But sacred vow here is, May we commit to do our best to sense love, even when others do not. May we do our best to sense love, even when others do not. And may we commit to do our best to see love to, when others do and we do not. Right? Can I still sense love if you can sense it in a moment where I do not? Because sometimes that's the challenge too, right? Like, can, can you hold that space even when I can't feel it? And will I just be willing to step in? And can I hold that space when you can't? And can I be willing to step in? Okay. So as you all know, I love poetry. Here's our, our poems for today. 
First one is uh, The Thing Is, The Thing Is by Ellen Bass. To love life, to love it even when you have no stomach for it, and everything you've held dear crumbles like burnt paper in your hands, your throat filled with the silt of it. When grief sits with you, it's tropical heat thickening the air, heavy as water, more fit for gills than lungs. When grief weighs you like your own flesh, only more of it, an obesity of grief. You think, how can a body withstand this? And then you hold life like a face. No charming smile, no violet eyes. And you say, yes, I will take you. I will love you again. A moment of his breath with that one. Poem number two, one of my very favorites. This one is by E.E. E. Cummings, and it is called Love is a Place. Okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one crying to <laughs> see you. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll feel it together, y'all. Mm, love is a place, and through this place of love, move with brightness of peace all places. Yes is a world, and in this world of yes, live skillfully curled all worlds. That one's worth repeating. Love is a place, and through this place of love, move with brightness of peace all places. Yes is a world. And in this world of yes, live skillfully curled all worlds. And lastly, our quote for today. <laughs> this one's from Rumi, who says that love is the bridge between you and everything. Love is the bridge between you and everything. So knowing that we are diving into this practice just a few days before, before Valentine's Day, we might just weave in a little bit of that love day into our hearts. Okay. I will shift onto my map. We are going to dive into some practice, perhaps in this transitional moment, tuning into your intention for today. What brought you here? What is your why? What you are hoping to take away. And the invitation today is to begin sitting on your heels, knowing that everything is optional. And that might mean that you'd like to sit on a block. Speaking of blocks, this is a class where it's helpful to have two blocks. Um, and so you can sit up on a block, if that's preferred. You can sit cross-legged if your knees say none, if neither of those are comfortable. And the invitation is to begin sitting up on your heels, if that serves you. And to take a moment to rub your palms together. I slide just a little closer so you can see some of my hand placement for just these first, first few. Um, can I speak louder? Huh, I wonder if my mic is not tuning in. Did I mute myself? Um, I can speak louder because how about that for a mic? Okay, you still hearing me okay? Good, all right. I think I just switched onto this mic, which means when I go back there, you'll still hear me just fine. Um, 
Much better. Good. Thank you. All right. So take a moment, rub your palms together. Thank you so much for letting me know I didn't have this mic on. That's important. And as you rub, a little warmth in your hands, sitting with your intention for a moment. Okay. And then from here, invitation is to bring your fingertips right between your eyebrows. And just a little bit of self-massage on what we call a little pressure point here. It's also a place where the vagus nerve comes close to your face. Just a little bit of circular movement right over this area. A little love here. Somehow we all seem to know this point intuitively. It's a place where sometimes we can try and manage life from. And as we open up our hearts, we'll also open up where our hearts connect to our face, our eyes, and then just moving your fingertips across your eyebrows out to your temples and a little massage right here. And you can maybe do that one or two more times, just sliding out, a little massage over the eyebrows to your temples. Beautiful. And then the next little spot here is under your eyes, sliding from the bridge of your nose out towards your, um, your cheekbones, and then pausing perhaps right underneath where your pupils might be, just maybe perhaps even to the inside of that, and then feeling across the tops of your cheekbones for one of those little tender spots again, and you might find a little circular motion with your fingertips for a moment before passing by to go to your temples, and then that lovely circular massage over your temples. Good. And you can find that sweeping movement once again across your cheekbones to your temples. Mm. Lovely. One more of those. Next spot is to slide down along the sides of your nose to the uh, edges of the nostrils, the crease is there, and then along the bottoms of your cheekbones. And as you slide outward, once again, you might find a nice little tender spot and you can find a little pause, maybe moving your fingers in gentle circles. We're opening up what I think of as the smile muscles <laughs> and just waking up your face and you can slide across this time over to your jaw and just give your jaw some circular movement. Ah. And you might even open and close your jaw, ah, letting go of some of the stress that we can accumulate in this spot. I know I do. And you can slide out again under the cheekbones, out to the jaw, and ah, you can let your jaw go slack. Right? Ah. And you might, once you arrive close to your ears, feel the natural calling to greet your ears and I'll invite you to do so. And you can roll out your earlobes, you can roll in your earlobes, you can meet that little area of cartilage in front of the ears that we call the tragus and giving that a little love. And maybe the concha of the ear around the ear canal, this is the seashell of the ear. Research says that's about 100% vagal fibers. That's pretty cool. So just giving yourself a little self-love. Good. And then any final intuitive self-applied touch, whether that's to the back of your neck, the sides of your neck, ah, base of your skull, maybe your whole face again for a moment. Even your scalp can feel so good. Ah, lovely. And when you feel complete with those movements, I'll invite you to bring your hands 
to heart center in what we call Lotus Mudra. Maybe I'll come closer for just a second on that. Lotus Mudra here is to bring palms of hands together, thumbs together, pinkies together, and open the hands wide. So we're kind of representing that open Lotus and most of us have some recognition that the Lotus has its roots in the mud. Yeah, so we, kind of honor the symbol here that the open heart knows suffering. And that as we breathe into the opening of the lotus flower of the heart, it's a representation of compassion and the profound journey it takes from us to move through our own suffering into compassion for self and compassion for other, that willingness to commit once again to do our best to feel and recognize love even when others do not, and to feel and recognize love when others do and when we do not. And connecting to your breath here. Perhaps some long, slow inhales and exhales right in and out of your heart. One more breath like that. And the next invitation is to cross your thumbs and to draw your arms up overhead. And just take a moment with your cross thumbs to kind of reach your side bodies just a little longer. Like, oh, uh, just let that be natural. A nice stretching open from the waist all the way up to your fingertips. Um, and then from here, and I'll show this from the side for a moment, just finding a little bit of a, of a reaching back and a curling forward. So your thumbs, maybe like the grasses waving or the palms waving in the, the gentle breeze and just allowing your spine to go with the flow here. And then releasing your hands. So part of why we're starting here sitting on the heels is for this next little exploration. And from the sitting on the heels, if you're there, we're going to slide the hips to the right. And you might find that your right toes kind of easily curl into your left sole of foot. So I'm kind of just sitting off to the right. Now, again, if it's too much on the knees and you want to sit off to the right on a block, do so. And you can do everything we're about to do sitting cross-legged as well is finding an open twist if you're cross-legged. Otherwise, we're gonna to twist toward the right as well. So hips have slid to the right, feet are off to the left. And we're just gonna find a gentle twist. Right fingertips on the earth behind you, left hand can come to the outside of your right thigh. You might take your gaze initially behind your right shoulder. You might even stretch your eyes in that direction for a moment. Hmm. And then taking your chin around to the left, keeping your upper body in the same shape. So body twisting to the right and just head twist to the left. You can take eyes across to the left. And then from here, you might keep your left hand holding onto the outside of the right high and free for thigh and reach the right arm up overhead. So now we're kind of leaning to the left and rooting down into that right hip for a moment. It's feeling the kind of beautiful sacred geometry of this shape for a moment. 
Breathing into your side body. And then we'll unwind all together. We're gonna to come back through center. You might pause for a moment, hips over heels, sensing left and right sides of your body. And then from here, hips shift to the left, maybe right toes curl into the, uh, left toes curl into the right foot, yeah. And then from here, beginning to turn and twist to the left. Each side might have a different story to tell and this side you might prefer to have that block and that's totally fine. So finding that initial twist, left fingertips supporting you, right hand pressing just gently here, chin towards left shoulder, eyes reaching with their gaze. And then keeping everything in the lower body the same, just the head turns, taking chin towards right shoulder. And you can take your eyes around as well. And you might start to sense this on the left side of your neck. And then from here, maybe freeing left hand and begin to lean to the right, feeling the left side body. You might gaze down or ahead of you, just listening to your body, make this yours. And then we'll lift up and out. And for a moment, back to center, the sensing and feeling. And then from here, the invitation is to come forward into a child's pose. Some variation thereof. Your knees can be together, your knees might be further apart. And starting with your hands reaching forward. And your head resting down. And then if you'd like, we're gonna to begin to walk the hands off the mat towards the right. And you can reach your left um, sits bone in the opposite direction. You know, you're reaching your hips towards your heels and hands to the right. And breathing into left side body, maybe under your left armpit. Beautiful. And then walking the other direction, hands off to the left, hips sinking back and slightly to the right, and send your breath into sensation. Beautiful opening of the intercostal muscles between the ribs. And then coming back through to center this time, coming up into a tabletop. And for a moment, just to finding your cat cow. Natural movement with breath, your range of motion. And then from here, taking right toes behind, you can rock the heel for just a moment, greeting your right calf. Lovely. And then maybe taking the right foot across. And once the foot comes up, you know, kind of across above the, the left foot here, you can begin to curl the upper body. So maybe taking your gaze towards that right foot, a little bit like a game of twister here. <laughs> okay. But let it feel good. And again, perhaps sensing and feeling the right side body, maybe this time closer to the right side waist. And sending your breath towards sensation. And then back through to center. 
We'll find that on side two, sending your left heel back, a few rocks here. Hmm. Yeah. And then taking the foot across and taking your gaze over the right shoulder. And once again, we have two sides. They're not always symmetrical. And you might notice that this side has a different story to tell. Send your breath there. And then back through to center. Good. And just wiggle it out for a moment. Any free form movement that you would like integrating all of that side body opening and spinal movement we've done thus far. And then when you feel ready, invitation is to come into your first downward facing dog, lifting your knees off the earth. And this first downward dog is totally yours to explore. So you might alternately bend one and the other knee. You can bend both knees. Maybe you even find a little twisting action, sending hips from side to side as you bend your knees. And knowing that we'll return to downward facing dog, just a few more breaths here. And eventually taking a walk forward towards the front of your mat for ragdoll. And this ragdoll, I invite you to take your feet nice and wide, that width or so, and you can take hands to the earth. You can always use a block to bring the earth closer. <laughs> and let your head go, your neck go. Hmm. You might even shake your head yes and shake it no. And then when you feel ready, finding a transition to standing, I'll invite today a roll up vertebra by vertebra as you make your way all the way up to standing. Hmm, new relationship to gravity. Take your time to arrive. Notice what's present for you here. And our next invitation is to find some uh, joint rotation. So for this, we're going to start with the right foot. You can actually start with either foot. We're going to do both. Let's choose one and start to rotate around your ankle in one direction. And then the other way. And then we'll find the same thing on the other side. So finding some gentle rotations about five times in each direction. Okay. From here, invitation is to step feet together for this one and to find some rotations of your knees. And I like to place my hands on my thighs as I do this. You can totally make this yours. So one direction and then the other way. So if you're looking at it from the side, it looks like that. A little circular motion, good. And then from there, lifting up, stepping feet wider than hip widths or so, and then finding some hip rotations. So in these joint rotations, we're just sequentially moving through major joints of the body, finding some circular motion and going the other direction. And then when we get to the spine, we're gonna work those joints in a different way. We're gonna find more of a spinal wave. So you can, Start to imagine that your spine here is like a 
string of pearls or a mala and you can kind of move one end and watch that ripple go through the whole chain and a few more breaths like that. And then coming back to standing and you can keep a soft bend in your knees, right? Even a little sway in your pelvis. And we'll get into the shoulders. Lactating shoulders in one direction and the other. Now, for me, once I've gotten that spine mobilized, it doesn't really want to stop. So uh, very often, once I come into the joints of the arms, the whole body is kind of going for the ride. We'll find the elbows in one direction and the other way. Good. And wrists. And you might notice that your elbows and shoulders and spine and hips want to go with the wrists, and that's all welcome too. So it can become a little, a little dance. Good. And then we'll take that dance up into the neck. And since turning the neck in a full circle can be tender, I invite you to imagine that you're just drawing a very small circle with the top of the head on the ceiling. And again, the hips might join. Or you can find a half circle ear to shoulder, ear to shoulder. Good. And then we put it all together and just let yourself find some movement of all of these joints. And you might even find a little balance play in here as you engage side to side the ankle, the knee, the hands, the wrists, the spine. Doesn't have to look any particular way. Just let it be your little dance, waking up to love and unwinding all the other stuff. The fear, the hurt, the sadness, the grief, just unwinding for a moment. Good. All right, and we'll pause in stillness, Lotus Mudra. And finding your feet on the ground, returning to breath and sensing what has shifted in response to that practice. How does your body and mind and heart respond? And then from here, hooking thumbs, just like we did seated and letting your arms come up overhead. And like we did seated, letting yourself lift up out of the hips, lengthening the side bodies, and then perhaps taking it to the right. And up through center and to the left. And we'll go up through center again, one more time each side to the right. And through center to the left. And back through center. And this time releasing your hands, placing your hands in your back pockets and lifting your heart for a moment. Just feeling that groundedness through the legs, your feet as your heart lifts. And then inhale as we lift up our body and exhale into a forward fold. Inhale, finding a halfway lift, lengthen the spine. And exhale, planting your hands. Invitation is to step back to a high plank. And then listen carefully, lowering knees, a temporary reach back towards child as hips go back. And then inhale forward and exhale to the earth. Okay. So we've made our way down onto the belly and a few cobra rolls here. Just finding 
mobility of your spine. One more like that. Your choice, how much weight in the hands, how much lift of your heart. As you settle back down, invitation now is to place elbows underneath your shoulders for a sphinx shape. And in this sphinx for a moment, drawing your elbows back, heart forward, and then explore drawing your ears back over your shoulders, your chin drawing straight back. So rather than chin lifted or lowered, nice and parallel to the ground. And we're not doing our typical belly up core strengthening, but we will do a little belly down core. So uh, perhaps interlacing your hands here, curling your toes under and lifting hips off of the earth. And for a moment, pausing here in a forearm plank. And you might even feel you can kind of roll on your toes a little bit and just feel yourself moving forward and back. A little bit of mobility in your shoulder joints and then stabilize shoulders above elbows. And then a little bit of a hip dip side to side and exploring what needs to engage in the very low abdominal muscles to support you in this shape and also to lower and lift side to side. Beautiful. Then coming back through to center, knees can lower down again, hips to the earth, releasing hands to the side. If you'd like a brief pause here in crocodile, forehead to the backs of your hands, feet can come out wide. Connecting to breath. And then when you are ready, hands to the earth, moving through a table, maybe even press back temporarily for a child's pose, and then up into a high plank for a moment. So we had a little forearm plank in this high plank, an invitation to find some of that spinal wave. So we'll bend the knees, lift the hips through a downward dog, and then it's the back of the heart like a wave to the shore as we come back forward into plank. And just two more of those. Bending the knees through downward dog, roll it forward like a wave. Last one. Mm. And we'll meet in downward facing dog. And second time that we're holding this shape, albeit briefly, and just notice how your body wants to greet this second time through if you want movement or stillness. And then gazing forward and taking a walk or a hop to the front of your mat. Maybe a halfway lift. And exhale to fold. And this time, perhaps with a long spine, a transition to standing. Okay, inhale, sweeping arms up. Exhale through lotus. Crossing thumbs, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, center. This time, exhale, drawing hands connected behind your back. Inhale to lift your heart. And exhale, forward fold, yogi mudra. Drawing connected hands up overhead. By way of your sacrum, hands down to the earth. Let's find an inhale together for a halfway lift. 
and exhale, planting hands, stepping back. High plank, lowering knees through a temporary child. Inhale, coming forward and to the earth. This time, just the cobra. Inhale, exhale. Good. Pressing back table, maybe child's. Up through to high plank. Moving back through downward facing dog. One time, waving your spine forward. High plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful. Catching the wave of your breath now. And on an exhale, invitation is to lower your knees and we'll find a variation of a side plank here. In this variation, right foot will slide to the right left leg long as you draw left arm up overhead. Now listen carefully, we're gonna move a little bit fluidly from side to side, allowing left arm to sweep all the way down to the earth back through table. This time left foot to the side, right leg reaches long, right arm up overhead, continue to swim across over and down, back through to table, and then side to side, swimming in your rhythm. Sliding the leg to the side, out, arm up, over, and to the earth. Beautiful. One more time each side. Lovely. And then back through to center, meeting in a tabletop. Breath here, and on an exhale, meeting in downward facing dog. Coming back to your breath for a moment. Fantastic. From a downward facing dog, invitation here is to draw right leg back behind and to find some wide knee hip circles. So you just, you can bend the knee, you can take your leg in one direction, maybe the other. And then gazing forward and stepping forward and through. And if you need your hand to help you get there, that's just fine. For a moment, taking your knee down, here's where two blocks can be handy, right? And think of these as like the go-go gadget arms, if that's a reference point for anyone, just giving your arms a little extra length as you come in and out of your lunge. Just a organic flow guided by your sensations and your rhythm and breath. One more breath like that. And eventually lifting up, we're gonna step the back foot in about a foot or so and coming into a variation of pyramid. So in pyramid, the legs really form that triangle shape, yeah? Both feet are facing somewhat forward, right toes to the front of the mat, left toes at an angle. You might work with a long spine as I'm doing here. You might begin to bow over that front leg and you might even find some of those spinal waves here. And then from pyramid, we're gonna step left foot back once again, and we're gonna make our way from the earth up to triangle trikonasana. Maybe you've done this with me before. And so just sliding that left arm up and you can find that 
that the right rotation for your hips, I like to keep my left hip still slightly rotated downward, drawing inner thighs towards each other as left arm lifts so that we're not uh, really opening it all. We've got some integrity and that strong connection to the earth. Now I've taken my block with me. In fact, I lifted it up to the higher height. So really adapting this to support your body. Gaze can be down to the side or up and coming back to breath. And you might find it nourishing here to find a little bit of movement with your left arm. You can reach it forward, down, back, and around. And noticing that connection between the movement of your arm and your side body. Okay. And then next time your arm comes forward, coming back through to that low lunge, taking left heel off of the earth and maybe settling the left knee down. In this shape, allowing yourself to find the um, kind of organic support here. You might come into what we often call kind of a dragon shape where the, the right foot angles out more. You might turn towards that right knee. You might even lift left foot, reach around, grab the dragon's tail, but remember, no right, no wrong. Listening and honoring. And then the next invitation, and I'm showing this purposely at an angle so you can kind of see what's gonna happen here with my legs, is to take that left knee off once again, off the floor. And then toe heel the right foot back. And then from here, we're finding another variation of an extended or a, um, a side plank. So I'm rolling onto my left heel. So I'm going to show this kind of more directly on my mat. I've walked my right heel closer to the middle of the mat as I roll onto the outer edge of my left foot. Pressing into left hand. And once again, you can find that knee down variation. So remember that we're stacking variations here and you can always go back to the one that's right for your body. Eventually, right hand to the earth, right foot back to meet the left, downward facing dog. This time, as we find this on the left side, invitation is to lift your left leg and find some of those big, broad, sweeping knee circles or hip circles, maybe each direction. And then gazing forward, stepping forward and through, and your free flow for a few breaths here. In and out of your lunge, knee can be down or lifted. Maybe you like those blocks there. Beautiful. Good. And then from here, we'll lift back knee up. Slide feet just a little closer, making your way into pyramid. And remember that if you are someone that tends to hyperextend in your joints, keeping a little bit of bend in that front knee or both knees is always beneficial. You can work with a long spine. You might find that spinal wave here. And then from here, stepping right foot a little further back, you can lift that high of the block if you like, and finding your way into Trikonasana Triangle. So you can check in with your hips. They don't have to be perfectly stacked and allowing yourself to maybe reach through the right arm. Pausing here for a few breaths, and you can still keep that micro bend in your left knee.
and then reaching your arm here and you can kind of find that direction of the reach maybe forward around back and up feeling the side body reach you rotating the arm and eventually that rotation can bring you back down into a low lunge lifting right heel and maybe lowering right knee to the earth. You could toe heel, left foot out to the side, and perhaps finding that opening toward the side body or toward the left leg, maybe lifting right foot, taking a hold of the foot here. And as we transition into that modified side plank. You can start by lifting the right knee, toe heeling, left foot down towards the center of your mat, and then rolling to the outer edge of your right foot. You can again, continue to adjust that, that left foot to be most supportive and feeling that connection between right hand, the lift of your left hand, got the kickstand of your left foot and the strength of your side body. All right, and then back around down, planting left hand and stepping back downward facing dog. Knowing that this might be a lovely point to lower knees, pressing back into child's, catching your breath as needed. Some of you might choose to stay in the downward dog. Some of you might even lower your elbows and find a challenge in dolphin. So you can, what we might say, up level or down level any practice, depending on your level of energy on any given day. And then when you feel ready, we'll meet once again in a downward facing dog. Our next transition is to draw right leg up once again, gazing forward, stepping right foot forward and through into a low lunge. Now, this low lunge is a knee down lunge. And if you need a little padding, I didn't uh, say at the beginning to grab a cushion or a blanket, but perhaps you have one and you might want a little padding there. And we'll kind of lift up into a vertical uh, stance above that left knee. So that may be a, a good reason to have that padding. And then for a moment here, kind of sensing and feeling yourself in this shape, you might prefer to have your upper body leaning forward. That might be a better choice for you. Right? So you can, you can opt in and opt out of anything. And invitation here is to find that Lotus Mudra. So taking your hands in front of your heart for a moment, Coming to breath. And then crossing thumbs, lifting your arms up overhead. In this shape, lengthening out of the waist. And a lean to the left, just a brief visit to that side. And then a lean to the right. And we'll pause in the right side here. And you might notice that Leaning to the right wakes up some sensation in your left hip flexor. You can amplify that if you'd like by leaning your hips a little forward and sending your shoulders and hands a little further back. You can, of course, decrease that sensation by lifting out of that. One more breath here. And on an exhale, we're taking left elbow around and across to the outside of your right thigh. And you can have your hands in some form of a prayer shape or uh, you know, a fist with an arm wrapped around it, whatever supports you here. And finding this twist in the shape and options include keeping that left knee down or maybe curling left toes under and lifting your left knee. Now feeling your way into now the twisted shape. And I'll invite everyone 
to take your hand to your right sacrum. So even if your knee down, we're going to take a transition up to standing, this time all the way up and around into what we'll call an exalted crescent. So with your hand on your sacrum, lifting your left arm up overhead, maybe gazing over your right shoulder. And we'll use this as a transition around to the front for a five-pointed star. So we've come out of the twist and we're lifting up here. Ah, made it through that big transition. Hands to heart for a moment, Lotus. We're gonna take legs into warrior two legs. Crossing thumbs, inhale. And this time, invitation to lean away from the right bent leg and towards and away. Inhale and leaning towards. Exhale. Inhale. Leaning away. Exhale. This time coming through center. And as we lean forward, unhook the thumbs and drawing right elbow onto right thigh. Really feeling the whole side body lit up here in our extended side angle. Listening to your neck, you might gaze down ahead. You might even lift up your gaze. And then gently, lovingly, we're gonna lift on out. You might lengthen that right leg for a moment. Here's our challenge. Block should be somewhere accessible for this one. And as you're rebending, we're gonna take right hand onto a block and take that forward with us for a balance challenge. This balance challenge we've been preparing for in all of that waking up of the side body. We're coming into a Ardha Chandrasana, a standing half moon variation here. And you can, of course, take this instead into a Trikonasana because it's relatively the same shape. Feeling that core wrapping around the side bodies that we've been connecting to. You might even take your gaze up and slowly hand to hip, resetting left foot to the earth. You might reverse it all for a moment for a big stretch. And on an exhale, turning, pivoting to the earth, stepping left foot back to meet, or right foot back to meet the left. Inhaling here. Exhale, downward facing dog. Rolling forward into plank. And exhale. Downward facing dog. One more like that, rolling it forward. This time, exhale, planting your knees, stepping back for a moment into, or sitting back for a moment into child's pose. An opportunity to check in with yourself, catch your breath. Notice how all the movement is circulating within you. And perhaps returning to some element of our intention today, the quality in which love is the bridge between you and everything. That commitment to open yourself to love, even when others do not and to open yourself to love, even when others can sense it and you do not. And slowly when you're ready, we're gonna come back through to a tabletop. 
So I want to demonstrate for a moment the options. Option one is that swimming side plank with the knee down. So you know this one. We did this earlier. Option two has added challenge. It's a swimming side plank, no knee down, okay? So in this one, we slide both heels one direction as the opposite arm comes up and over and around and the heel is the other way. Right arm, in this case, up and around. So feel it out for yourself. You can choose what is right for you. And if you're, I'm gonna guide you or talk you through the, the high plank version. In this case, heels dropping to the right, left arm frees up, up, over, around. You can even follow with your gaze. And then heels drop to the left as the right arm is freed. Swimming over and across. And moving with your breath your rhythm. Finding one more to each side. And as you come back through to center, pressing back downward facing dog. We'll find side two of our flow, inhale, reaching left leg behind, gazing forward and stepping left foot forward and through. And you, now you know why we have our blocks for today and you might bring them close so that they're at hand and you might use them as a variation of this lunge or begin to stack shoulders over hips, over knee and sensing yourself in this shape, we find Lotus Mudra, the open heart that is rooted in the muddiness of our own suffering that serves as the roots for compassion. Crossing thumbs, lifting arms up overhead, reaching out of the waist, and then a brief lean to the right, Inhale through center and a lean to the left and then feeling your way in. We'll pause here. You might shift your hips a little forward. You might lean your heart back, your shoulders back, head back even, reaching fingertips. And you can find that edge of sensation and back out. And then up and around, taking right elbow to the outside of your left thigh. You can have hands in prayer. And this is a lovely place to stay in your twist. You might choose to lift right knee off of the ground, connecting to your breath in whichever shape you're choosing. And then perhaps taking that left hand to your sacrum and you can stay here or begin to lift up into an exalted shape. So you can keep that grounding of hand to sacrum as you draw right arm up overhead, gazing across your left shoulder. And then here's that tricky move. We're opening all the way up to five pointed stars. We untwist the hips. We can wiggle it out for a moment. And then drawing hands to Lotus Mudra. You know this, you've got this. Crossing thumbs, drawing arms up overhead. And we come into warrior two legs. From warrior two legs, inhale and exhale, we reach back. Inhale through center, exhale as we reach forward. <sighs> Moving with your breath. Feeling the strength of your side bodies. 
This time, inhale through center. Exhale, free the hands and left elbow can come to your thigh. And we'll find a nice long reach of right arm, right fingertips all the way to the outer edge of your right foot, breathing into your side body here. Now, remember we have options and option one as we lift up is to come down into a triangle, a trikonasana, or if you're wanting that balance shape, we come down planting left hand to a block. We can take that forward with us as we slide right toes across the mat, perhaps lift them up off the ground. You can keep right hand on your hip or maybe reach your fingertips up perhaps even the gaze lifts. Going back to breath if you've lost it. And to hip, and here's that gingerly stepping back, transition, a moment to reverse it all, to stretch it all out. And exhale to the earth. And we'll find a few breaths here in that wave of a plank and downward dog. Sending your hips back and coursing forward. And back. And forward and a brief pause, knees down, hips back, knowing that these pauses are yours to do with as you'd like. So if you prefer a dolphin, if you want something more challenging, go for it. And if you're ready to breath, to breathe and to catch your breath here in child's bows, finding that here. When you feel ready, we are moving up through tabletop. And once again, I might take a short moment to demonstrate the option of what can come next if you so choose, knowing that it's totally your practice. You get to choose one of the earlier variations of our side plank if that's a better fit for you. This one, as we come into a high plank, we're gonna rotate the heels to the side just as we did, finding a side plank and an option to lift into a tree pose or even to place your toes behind you, in which case you can bend the knees and lift into wild thing. Big open heart moment. You can bend the knees, come back through high plank and we'll find that on the other side, okay? So listen to your body, right? We're gonna to start together in a high plank. Invitation is to take heels to the right. You can knee down, right? You've got options. <laughs> if we're taking the heels to the right, you might pause here, feet staggered. That's a great place to be. You might begin to explore, how does it feel to lift the right, the left foot? Maybe you bend the knee, even find a little bit of a tree pose. And you might take those toes behind you. And if you're doing so, you can take a moment just to even, even put your bum, bum down, right? Like let it be restful as we take that transition to lift up, over, open it up, feeling those three points of contact with the earth, left toes, right foot, right hand, and then rebend the knees as we come around to plank and maybe a pause, take out your arms for a moment between sides. Let it go, wiggle it out. We'll find side two. To a high plank, knowing your variations. Rolling heels to the left. 
planting that left hand, really feeling the strength of the side bodies as you draw right arm up. Great place to stay, feet are staggered. Maybe you explore lifting right foot off the earth, also a great place to stay and you can stack your feet or you might bend the knee. Finding a pause in tree pose in a good place to stay as well. And you might explore planting right toes, bend the knees. You can even sit for a moment and then lifting up around, opening the heart. Big, wide, open heart. And then we can come back around through plank, knees down and pausing this time an invitation to find that pause sitting on your heels, similar to where we began in rock pose. Maybe resting palm into palm on your lap, or if you like, returning to Lotus Mudra. So we'll have one more relatively short standing sequence and it has a challenge in it as well. So you can opt in or opt out, remember. Um, and then we'll be really cooling down and resting after that. So to prepare, invitation is to come through to downward facing dog. Hmm. And from downward facing dog, once again, right leg can lift on your inhale, exhale, gazing forward, stepping all the way forward and through, assisting your leg to get there as you're ready. And then this time, planting your left heel and we'll come up into warrior one. And you can bring your hands to your waist to start. And in that transition where warrior one is an invitation to work towards squaring your hips, but there's nothing rigid in this. So at the point at which your hips say, that's as square as I go, then we can draw the heart forward. And for today's warrior one, an invitation for our Lotus Mudra. Crossing the thumbs, inhaling your arms up overhead, really letting that bring your heart up, feeling a little bit of the, the back bend in this shape, even as you reach right knee forward, you're reaching your heart up and back. And then on an exhale, we're gonna come all the way forward, grab those blocks and place them on the either side of your front foot. And we're returning to pyramid, so you can slide your left foot a little bit in for this. So we've been here in pyramid before. This time we're going to twist our pyramid into Pavrita Trikonasana, twisted triangle. So options for this one, option one is to keep left hand on its own left block and to place your hand on your sacrum and just begin to turn to the right. That's plenty, that is plenty. And you might also choose to take left hand to the opposite block where you're crossing the midline and coming onto the other side of your right leg. It's also plenty. So feel out the degree of the twist that's right for your body. You might take right arm up overhead. And I'll encourage you to bring right hand back to sacrum and left hand back to left block. The final little challenge option here is to take that block forward and to lift left foot off the floor. Now, from here, our reverse half moon takes our twist towards the right, maybe right arm lifts. We're not here too long. And we'll come out the way we came in, bending right knee, stepping left foot back. 
from here, planting both hands. Invitation is to lift right leg once again, open the hip, really luxuriate in that open form before exhaling right knee toward right wrist for half pigeon. And you can toe heel your left foot back and maybe lift up onto your fingertips for a moment. You can always place a block underneath your right hip if that's preferable. And you can always come to your back for a supine figure four. Taking a few breaths here in the lifted form of pigeon. And when you feel ready, perhaps lengthening yourself forward as much as down and resting towards the earth with your upper body, perhaps resting your forehead onto stacked palms or a block or your mat. And while we might not have lungs in our right hip, you can certainly use intentional breathing to send awareness into the sensations. From your half pigeon, you might stay just as you are, or you might send the right palm on the floor, this time twisting left arm underneath right as left shoulder comes towards the floor, and this time the side of the head. And you can place your right hand underneath for support or let your head rest on a block. You might even take right arm back and around of draping across your back. So this twisted pigeon, sometimes referred to as a variation of broken wing. And perhaps even just to feel what happens when we twist ourselves up in all of these different shapes and what breaks free within us, where we greet our own tenderness, our own brokenness with the most loving awareness. And slowly we unwind, placing right hand down to untwist the left arm. And then a moment to step right foot back and you might want to find a little bit of your own in, you know, movement here that frees up <clears throat> any sensation in your right hip. You might even circle your hip out again. You can stack, you could even find another wild thing. Really getting creative, putting all of these layers together. Taking your time. And when you feel ready, finding side two. So recall that we are starting with our warrior here. And inhale, freeing your left leg. Exhale, stepping forward and through. Helpful to have those two blocks as that'll help with our later transition. And hands to waist, lifting up. A moment here to tune in to this side. What happens as you orient towards squaring your hips and then your heart? Maybe a pause here, Lotus Mudra at the heart. And then crossing thumbs to lift and lengthen. And then really commit to your legs, commit to that bent lunge in your left knee as you lift through your heart, your arms. 
Sending your breath all the way down through your right leg, right hip flexor, all the way to your right foot. And then inhale as we lift. Exhale as we lower, catching your blocks and stepping right foot a little forward here, preparing for pyramid, the place we've been. And Pavrita Trikonasana. Simplest form, right hand stays on right block, left hand to sacrum, and begin to twist upper body to the left. Maybe you lift the left arm. Maybe you take right hand across. Regardless of what you've chosen here, returning left hand to sacrum, right hand to the right block. And we'll take that forward with us, rocking weight forward into your left leg. And maybe coming into that lifted balance, right leg to lift, maybe left arm to reach. We're not here too long. And then returning the way you came to the earth, knowing that we get to come into pigeon from here, lifting your left leg and exhale. Left knee, left wrist, and a moment here, lifting into pigeon. You can always use your blocks here as well. Feeling the strength of your core, drawing knees towards each other, drawing inner thighs towards each other, taking a moment of breath here. And exhale, sleeping pigeon. <laughs> Let's take a rest. And it may or may not feel restful, right? There's a lot that we carry in our hips and being gentle and loving with whatever arises. Committing to do our best to sense love even when others do not. And committing to do our best to see love when others do and I do not. Resting your forehead. Sending your breath as if you had a straw that you could breathe all the way down into your left hip. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you did so on the other side, planting left hand, threading the right arm through, finding a little cushion for your head if you need it, and maybe staying here or wrapping your left arm around. Slowly we unwind and plant left hand to let the right arm come back and through. And whatever you found on the other side, perhaps finding that on this side as well, whether that's opening the leg, your knee circles, maybe some of you open the hips, find that beautiful opening here. You might even take the toes around and finding your way into that wild thing, something perhaps we can integrate in the wisest ways. Eventually meeting in downward facing dog after you find your, found your movement integration and then knees down, crossing the feet, coming all the way down onto your back. And we will transition into 
final resting shape, Shavasana. And today I will invite a full three minutes there, perhaps as a, a transitional shape, drawing your knees in. You can rock a little side to side. We had lots of twists today. I'm not going to guide you through a final twist, but if you need it, take it. If you want a happy baby, whatever lets you find your final movement integration is needed, but eventually making your way, legs long, arms wide, Shavasana. And arriving in stillness upon completion of a whole lot of movement in this flow. A very sacred return. And perhaps sensing the internal movement that's still occurring, whether that's between your ears and your head, or the sensations circulating through your body. Maybe scanning your body, noticing any lingering tension or resistance to gravity and knowing that there's an invitation to soften your eyes and jaw, shoulders arms to wrists and hands, letting your torso be heavy, hips heavy, releasing in your hips, your knees, your ankles, toes, whole body resting, receiving the nourishment of stillness. And residing here, please, Knowing that love is a bridge. Love is the bridge between you and everything. Love is a place. Love is a place and through this place of love move with brightness of peace, all places. And yes is a world. And in this world of yes, live skillfully curled all worlds. I'll invite us to recall that the presence of love is often invisible, and that the practice of yoga helps us to sense this invisible force that unites us. Slowly, slowly, when you feel ready, perhaps beginning to integrate just a little bit of movement. Wiggling your fingers and your toes. Rotating hands around the wrists, feet around the ankles. And rolling to one side, perhaps pausing there, knowing of course you can stay in your Shavasana for the rest of the day, <laughs> if you choose, however long you need. But as you feel complete and ready, Perhaps pressing back up to sitting. Together, I invite us to perhaps return to holding life like a face. Between your palms, a plain face, no charming smile, no violet eyes. And you say, yes, I will take you. I will love you again.
From the loving, compassionate heart within me, I bow to the loving, compassionate heart within each of you. Namaste.